So this is sort of an addendum to my previous video, comparing Intel's first-generation HD graphics to the NVIDIA GeForce 210. Some have commented saying that they'd like to see the 210 compared against the 710, or wish I had done all three. So here's just a quick video showing the performance of all three compared side by side. So many have said in the comments the 210 was not designed as a gaming GPU. It was just there, you know, to accelerate H.264 video or to allow their user to add more monitors. And while that's true, the reason I tested 3D aspects as well is, well, there were some where that's all they had. That's what they were stuck with, and that's what they had to use the game on. Some either couldn't afford anything higher, or they were just kids then, and their parents wouldn't upgrade or buy them anything better. Well, the 710 is sort of in the same boat, just newer, and as you'll see, much better than the 210. The 710 often cost around the same as what the 210 was priced at, but it had a lower TDP and far higher specs. We know that the 210 and 710 can easily display HD YouTube content, so we'll jump straight to 3D. In Sanctuary, the 710 was over double the performance of the 210. The 210's maximum FPS couldn't even touch the 710's minimum. In Heaven, it was the same story. Although the 210 did a little better here, still the 710's average was over double of the 210's. You must be the huh? Hopkins boy. Where'd you come from? Bully seemed to max out at 30 FPS. Even with VSync off, it was just locked in at 30 FPS for the 710, and as you can see by the 710's GPU usage, it really didn't have to work too hard. Well, in comparison. Anyway, I can't spend my life waiting around for naughty little boys. I've got a man to make happy. With Need for Speed Most Wanted, the 710 did best again, although the 210 didn't perform too bad. Now, with Unreal Tournament 3, I had to set it to 1024 by 768 for the HD graphics to even run it at all. All did okay, they're playable, but the 710 came out again on top, as expected. In Portal 2, once again, the 710 averaged about double that of the 210. Again, all were playable, but the 710 had a far higher average frame rate. In Half-Life 2 Episode 1, I ran the same time demo on all, and, well, yeah, the 710's frame rate was well over double, and was actually nearly triple the performance of the 210. I'll let this play out, but the 710 finished far before either of the other two. Now, Vice City was no problem at all for any of them, and the 210 and 710 performed about the same. But as you can see, there's more to it because the 710's GPU usage was far lower than the 210's, so it was probably down to something like memory bandwidth. With San Andreas, we're back to the 710, once again pulling in twice the frame rate of the 210. Here's the settings I used for GTA 4. Everything was set super low because of the HD graphics, and again, I had to run everything at 1024 by 768. Now, jumping straight to the in-game benchmark, the 710 actually averaged over three times the frame rate of the 210.
where the 210 averaged 15 FPS, the 17 actually averaged 51. So again, neither the 210 or the 710 were really built to be good performers when it came to gaming. They were mostly meant to be used for regular 2D tasks, but some had no choice to use either one of these to game with. Today we look down on the 710, but the 210 was far worse. Yes, it may have worked well for you for what you needed it for, and that's wonderful, but you got far more for your money with the 710. And yes, I know, the 710 came out four years after the 210, but that's sort of like saying the Pentium D wasn't a pile of garbage because the Core 2 Duo came out, you know, a year later. The Pentium D was still garbage. We were just stuck with it. So that was just a quick video comparing the three. Take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.